everyone! So as most of you know, I sell prints of my artwork online and I have been doing so for about two to three years now. And the whole process of doing so has been a huge learning experience for me and I've, I've had to learn a whole bunch about the printing process, the packaging process, um, shipping, all that jazz. And ever since I started selling them, I've gotten a lot of questions of people asking me how I sell my prints. And like I said, I had to learn a lot about the process in order to start actually selling the prints. Let me just preface this video by saying that this is not sponsored. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna be talking openly about the different brands and the different websites that I like to use personally, the ones that have worked for me, but I'm not being paid by them to say this. Although I wish I was. So yeah, if you wanna learn how to sell prints of your own artwork, please keep watching, give this video a thumbs up. I make other videos about art and stuff, so if you wanna check out those, you can check out those. And without further ado, here is how to sell your prints. So one of the main reasons I was so confused about this process, I wasn't sure how people got scans of their artwork. I make some pretty big pieces, so I was like, oh God, I could never fit those on a scanner. I don't know how to do this. Help, how do I scan my work? But you don't have to scan it. In fact, I don't scan a lot of my work. I actually just take the camera, the one that um, I'm being filmed on right now, and I take a high quality picture of the work. And some really important tips to remember when taking the photo is to make sure you get good lighting, make sure to avoid reflections. So you have to really play around with lighting. I prefer natural lighting for photographing my work just because I find it illuminates the work and the colors a lot better. But you have to be really careful that you don't get any sort of weird shadows or reflections. It just has to be a nice flat frontal light that captures your work as best as you can. The whole key here is to basically just take a photo of your work that matches its original state the best. What painting can I grab? Let's grab this thing. You see, you see this reflection? You don't want this reflection. You don't want any of this business. You just want a nice flat. Like even this lighting right now is perfect. You're gonna wanna avoid direct sunlight, like literally this right now. It's just perfect and it illuminates the colors so, so well. Be careful because some lenses tend to warp it and kind of make it look like a fisheye effect. If you're having this problem, you can actually just zoom in the lens a bit and take a step back from the work. I find if you zoom in the lens a little bit, it gives less of like a warped look. You really wanna avoid any sort of deformation or distortion of the work. Um, so yeah, you have your nice high quality picture. You upload the pictures to your computer. You open up the raw file in Photoshop. And actually I recently added prints of this painting to my shop. So you can check that out if you want. Something that you really want to capture, and I personally really like to capture, is the brush strokes. There's a really good amount of texture to this piece, and I really wanted to capture that with my photo of it, because it kind of just makes it look even more real, even more painterly. So much fun. I'll usually open Photoshop on my computer, and I'll have the painting right next to it, so I can refer to it back and forth, because sometimes, and you know, we've all been there. You can get a little carried away with the edits on Photoshop and then your colors end up being something totally different than what you started with. So to have the painting right next to the open Photoshop file as you're editing is a really good reference point to have. Okay, now it comes to the actual print making. There's a lot of different places where you can get prints done. Um, if you even do a quick Google search, you can find so many different print shops near you. You, you could go into a couple different ones and you'll know, get get one print done at each one and you know, see which one you think is the best quality. Um, my first ever prints I got made at Staples, um, which is just like a popular office supply store in Canada. I don't know if you guys have it anywhere else, but the prints were pretty good. Like, I really like the paper quality and it was really convenient and close to my house. Um, but now, one of my very bestest friends works at the print shop at my school, at my university, so those facilities are awesome and the printers are designed to print art, like they're designed to print beautiful colored images. So I started using that print shop instead and that's been great as well. These are some beautiful, beautiful prints and the quality is just everything, like it's like the exact same as the original piece. You can see every little brush stroke and it's just such good quality. And then I also am able to get larger prints made. I really like this one. I drew this one with marker and you can literally see all the little, all the little marks I made. 
It's the biggest prints that I've made so far um, and I'm hoping to make bigger ones if people want to place custom orders like if you want something a lot bigger it's gonna be a bit pricier but it's gonna be worth it because look at that quality. Now moving on to packaging. This was the only available size of my prints when I first started out and it's actually pretty easy to find something to ship this in. You can either just get a regular 85 by 11 envelope and cut out a sleeve of cardboard to put in. For the longest time Staples carried these amazing envelopes. They were like made of cardstock and cardboard. They were like nearly impossible to bend and they fit these perfectly and it was so easy, so simple. But then they like discontinued them and I never could find them again, so... But then things got a little more complicated once I got these different sizes, because these are 13 by 17, which is a weird dimension, like there's not a lot of envelopes that like, you know, fit these dimensions. So I have learned to make my own envelopes out of cardboard. I don't know if this is like sketchy and unprofessional, but it's been working for me pretty well. Um, I'll basically take the old boxes from my work and make them into envelopes. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do that. It's simple, you know, it's all from scratch. It's like homemade envelope. Uh, I don't know if that makes it cuter, but it does the job, so. And then the last step is just mailing it out. You go to your local post office and you just ship out the prints. It's a good idea to get a price estimate on the shipping costs before you actually set the price on your website. These aren't that expensive to ship out this size, but once you package something like this up, even though it's not that much bigger, it counts as a parcel instead of just a simple envelope. So the shipping costs do go up. And that's something I had to learn the hard way because, you know, I just kind of took the price of these, knocked it up a few dollars, but no, these ones, these ones were quite a bit for shipping, so make sure you get the price estimate before you actually set the price online. Um, just go to like the post office and ask them how much it would be to ship out this, then you can change it on the website, and all is Gucci. Now, let me talk about the website that I use. I know quite a bit of people who like manually sell their prints, if that makes sense. Like they will post somewhere on social media that they are selling prints and people can DM them and you know, like set up like an arrangement to pick them up and whatnot. They'll DM their address and then you ship it out. I've been using this website called Big Cartel ever since I started selling prints and it's been such a blessed website for me. It's so easy and it does all the jobs that like I don't wanna do and it lets me do exactly what I want to do, which is to get my own prints done so I can assess the quality myself. Um, it lets me ship them out. I personally always like putting in a little handwritten note into each of my packages, just thanking the person for buying and it adds just such like a personal flair and like, just so you guys know, like I package up all these prints. They're all wrapped with love. Yeah, so I really like having the control where I'm able to get my own prints done so I know exactly the quality I want, exactly how I want them done. Um, same with the packaging. There's no miscommunications. There's no, I'm not left out of the loop. Like I'm the, the one doing the hands-on work. I really prefer it that way. And then Big Cartel is great for, for just getting the payments through. And then each person who buys them puts their information. So then it, like their shipping address just shows up. It's nice and easy for me. I just write it on the envelope. You can get a free membership. You can get like a $10 a month one if you want some more products and some more features. You can also customize your website so much, which I have been loving. I made my website all pretty. It looks really Real good. I've really been liking Big Cartel and you can like set all the prices yourself and you get 100% of the payments like they don't take a percentage of it which I really like as well. When setting the prices for your prints you have to take into consideration three things. The cost of getting the print done itself, the cost of shipping it out, and then the value of the actual artwork that you made. You have to just kind of add those all up. Be real
realistic with yourself. Price it at a point where you know you'll be making profit rather than throwing all that money back into, you know, costs of materials, of printing, of shipping. Yeah, so Big Cartel is a great website. It's been a great website for me. Super easy to set up, super easy to get everything organized on there and all the payments processed through there. And then that's pretty much it. You can do a lot of fun things like, you know, I like leaving the handwritten notes in the packages. You can also like get a custom stamp made for your envelopes. That's something fun to do. I Something important that I like to put on my envelopes is do not bend because they're delicate, lovely prints. Um, and yeah, I wish you guys the best of luck in setting this all up and making this happen for yourself. It's a great way to earn a little extra side cash for making art, which is, you know, so rewarding. Um, and speaking of that, I have to do a shameless self promo. I'm so sorry. Um, link is in the description for my site where I sell my prints. Um, like I said, I hand package each one with love and care. These are the two newest ones that I added to my site. But we have all sorts of other ones in the works. We got this fun guy, this fun one. We got a lot of options. So yeah, go check it out if you guys like any of the prints. It would mean so much to me if you supported me and my work. Um, and yeah, I hope this was super helpful for you guys. Let me know in the comments what you think and what you want me to talk about next. What do you need help with? What do you want insight on? Uh, oh, my camera died. That's cool. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.